This is Strange Love After Hours. I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to Strange Love Live. I'm your host, Cami Chaos. As always, we've got Dr. Normal back behind the desk. And this week, our guest is Brian M. Westbrook. Hello. Again and again and again. Again and again and again. Are you sick of me yet? No. Oh. Darn. <laughs> How you doing? The chat room saying yes, we're sick. Please New kick guest. Brian like, bloop, bloop, off bloop, the show. Bloop, 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 bloop. How Can many, we watch another one? How many times is this now? I think we decided four. If we count the co-host gig. We count, yeah. Nice. I you know I've I've been in front of the Doctor Normal Tricaster a couple of times, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. as it were, the cameras and things you know. Yeah, yeah. And there's like I, I gotta say. I've I've not been on the show for a couple of months now. I mean, we did 30 Hour Day, obviously, but, yeah. but it was before 30 Hour Day that I was on the show. There are like 12 more cameras here in the studio. Yeah. Since the last time I was here. Yeah. There are 12 more you... cameras in the studio than there were last time I was here. <laughs> Which was 20 <laughs> minutes before I was. I think that um, I really think that we should take away his eBay access. I'm thinking that might be as 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 his uh, partner and as his wife. Yeah. That would yeah. be really nice. Um, you know, and or that's where the Girl Scout cookie budget could go. I'm not sure if the Girl Scout I don't think would the, agree to that, but I don't think the Girl Scouts would like that. But you know, it's a it's a thought. It is a thought. Maybe a we thought. could just have a Strange of Life cookie sale. We could have a bake sale. No, I don't think so. I think we should talk about one of the reasons you're here. You were at CES last week. I was at the Consumer Electronics Show. The some quick stats. Okay. The largest. Trade show in North America. Mm-hmm. The largest show, obviously, in Las Vegas, mm-hmm. which says a lot because Vegas gets all the big shows. Yeah, it does. The largest electronic show, one of the largest electronic show, period. And to give you an idea, the reason they have the show in early January, the first week of January, is because it takes the entire month of December to set it up. So, of course, December, it's Christmas and New Year's. Nobody wants to go to a a convention that time of year. So they can build literally cities inside the Las Vegas Convention Center. The Microsoft booth is the size of shopping malls. Uh, You've got stadiums and stages and multiple-story buildings Mm -hmm. uh, that are built inside this convention center. Cars and RVs and autos and lawns. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's... It's monstrosous. Uh, some would argue ridiculous, mm-hmm. but it's fun because you get to see all the latest consumer electronics, all the latest gadgets, all the things that people are working on, and uh, it's a, very overwhelming. What year was this? This was the somewhere in the forties, I think. Um, there, it, 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 it's forty or fifty, I think. I can't remember, but this is my fifth year mm-hmm. at the Consumer Electronics Show. And, um, you know, of course, the economy has played a, a part in, yeah. the, in at CES. This year was down, but it was up from last year. Last year, in 2009, when we went to the CES uh, show, you could get a taxi. There mm-hmm. were no lines. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could. It, it was eerily empty. Yeah. You know, last minute hotel reservations. You're talking about $100 hotels, which is expensive for Vegas. But at CES, that's a bargain. Yeah. You know, we're talking three, dollars $400 this year for a hotel. You know, flights with availability, a couple hundred dollars. This year, three, four hundred dollars if there was a flight available. Um, but honestly, this year, as far as announcements go, as far as the big news, kind of lackluster. Yeah. Uh, you know, 3D TV was a, was a big splash. But I don't know. Like, you know, 3D TV, I think it's cool. I think it's fun. It's creative. It's different. But there's not a lot of practicality. There's not a lot of functionality no, in no, that. No, absolutely. And... You know, they, there were a couple of announcements, Dish Network, DirecTV, all of the big guys, Comcast, everyone's saying, hey, we're going to have 3D networks. We're going to have a 3D network. You know, that'll be like 2011, 2012. I will, pro- I will probably start caring about 3D in about 2012, 2013. And even then, it'll be, you know, it, it'll, it'll become accessible, but it's not really something... I, personally, I don't know that I ever really need it. I don't need to be that engaged and... In the television I'm watching, I mean, I, it's 
it's uh. pretty cool. Like, I, I saw some great demos. Sony had their 3D, you know, you put the little goggles on, they're mm-hmm. mostly ridiculous. Um, the PlayStation 3 will have 3D capability through a firmware upgrade. Of course, they won't tell you how much, they won't tell you when it'll be available, but it will be available at some point. Yeah. You can upgrade your, your PlayStation 3. Uh, they showed DVD movies. They showed broadcast quality 3D. But again, you know, the idea of buying a, another TV to plug yeah. in with these goggles that are, in some cases, 40 50 bucks now. Yeah. I mean, you know, they'll drop in price. I just, I just don't see it. Yeah, I'm just going to wait for a holodeck. It's fine. Some of the things that were cool, though, there were uh, ebook readers of yeah. all shapes and sizes. And, you know, every time that, you know, when digital cameras were new, there were all these digital cameras that some were good, some were boring um but the ebook readers the one that caught my eye um was an ebook reader it had an android powered screen on the bottom a color screen Mm -hmm. so it played video clips it was good for navigation that sort of thing and then on the top was the actual e-ink screen so you could flip through the book and read it that way if there was a video clip associated with the title you could then see the video down below you could watch the clip you could engage you know color photos that sort of thing so some interesting things in the ebook world but i gotta say uh there were probably a dozen different ebook readers at the Consumer Electronics Show. Three, four, five of them will ever make it to market. Yeah, uh, it's kind so, of sad, but but kind of exciting. It's so the same is that? Time. I mean, does that happen a lot? You go, you see all the stuff at the show, but it's all it's not all pre market, but a lot of it is. A fair amount of it is, and there's a lot of things that you see there. There are entire rows of knockoff, like knockoff iPhones, knockoff this, knockoff that components, right? Yeah. Like you see a finished product, you see a Sony camera, you see, um, you know, any sort of like video cameras are a great example. You'll see the the individual pieces that are available for demo that are for available for sale. And what they're looking for is they're looking for the equipment manufacturers to put those into final products mm-hmm. to then make a wearable camcorder or to make an HD pocket cam or, you know, sort of like you take your idea, couple it with their components, and then you end up with this finished product. And then, of course, software and that sort of thing, you know, finishing products, packaging, marketing, obviously. Um, and that's what a lot of the show is. It's also a lot of products that are looking for distribution. Mm-hmm. So you see a lot of, like, really good ideas. It's like going to a film festival for movies. You see a lot of great films, but, you know, they may never see the light of day because there isn't distribution. They don't have a DVD deal, whatever. Um, in this case, I saw a couple of things that I'm, that I was really excited about. Mm-hmm. And then you realize, you know, I can't really tell my audience about it because they may never be available. So why don't you tell me, and and I don't care if it's ever available to them or not. You guys will live. Uh, What's the most outlandish, ridiculous thing that please don't come to fruition? And what was the the one thing that you saw there that you think would be most beneficial to us if it did? There were a couple of things that I thought were just absolutely ridiculous. The personal radar, uh, the personal speed detector... It was like a device you wear that tells you f- how fast you're going. I, I, I didn't, qu- to be fair, I didn't quite understand it because I didn't really want to. You're not a runner? Uh, I, I, do, I don't even think it was really that. I think it was like you, you wear it and you have it in your car and it tells you how fast. I mean, my GPS will do that. I, I don't know. I didn't get it. It's um, just parsing was, out something that you could have something else do. It, pretty much, yeah. There was a, uh, a, a a breathalyzer. There were numerous breathalyzers there. Mm-hmm. It's like. Yeah. Okay. If you think that there might be an issue, just don't yeah. drive. My guess <laughs> is that if you need one, you've got a problem. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. Um, there were there were some other devices there. One that I thought was kind of clever, but I actually kind of fell in love with it only because I had a cute story. Mm-hmm. It, it, like fundamentally, it's a ridiculous device. Okay. And I'll describe it. And I I, I wanted to bring one, but <laughs> I, I, I'm not kidding you. I waited at at this booth for 20 minutes, and then I'm like, I right, I gotta go. Yeah. I gotta go. I'm like, hello, I'm here. Hello, could you, you know, press pads, could you? No. No. They were they were busy explaining to the same guy for 30 minutes. I'm like, all right, I gotta go. But it's a little, it's a, about the size of a poker chip. Mm-hmm. And it's a device that you put in your purse, you put in your pocket, you put, you know, you clip on, you put in your jacket pocket, whatever. It's Bluetooth. Mm-hmm. So if you are ever separated outside of Bluetooth range from your cell phone, it will go off. It'll sound an alarm. So if your cell phone... Is in your purse and you've got this in your pocket. Somebody uh-huh. takes your purse away. Uh-huh. Or let's say, for example, um, you, you're me and you tend to walk away without your phone. Or you lose your phone. <laughs> it helps keep you and your cell phone together. Yeah. That's, That's the pretty theory. cool. That's the theory. It's kind of cool. It's also one of those like, 
this is simple. Why didn't I think of that? It's kind of like the thing you click to find your keys. And my biggest problem with something like what that is... What if I don't have that? Correct. My biggest problem with that, something like that, is if I can't if I can't keep track of my phone, how am I going to keep track of the little the locator? Bluetooth thing yeah. in my... Yeah. I think the idea is that you tape the locator device to your wall, and then you always know where it is, and then you mm-hmm. can... But, yeah, and there, there's some ridiculous things out there. But a lot of the things that really struck me as being just off the wall and crazy were the Chinese-made random... Like, like you pick it up and... You, they won't let you pick them, but they're behind a glass case. I'll tell you why they're behind a glass case. Because if you touch it, it'll crumble. Mm-hmm. Just crumble. And there, there's some ingenious ideas, but really just need some fleshing out. Yeah. Need some fleshing out. So what was the most practical thing? Most practical thing. Um, well, there were, there were a couple of things that, that caught my eye that um, one of them I actually brought. The It's called a pogo plug. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's move over to what you actually brought. This is um th- this one I like. It's it, this is it's it's kind of slick, and you have to kind of mm-hmm. go with me on a little journey here to imagine it's how it'd be useful for. Um, great product design. I think yeah. the pink is is kind of practical. Helps people get the idea. But it's got three USB ports on it, mm-hmm. and the USB ports are for plugging in an external device, an external USB hard drive. So you plug an external USB hard drive in there. Mm-hmm. You see, there's three USB ports on the top. There's an Ethernet jack down below, and then that's power there at the very bottom. What you do, you plug it into your home network. You mm-hmm. plug any USB hard drive. You could plug a USB memory stick. You could plug anything like that into it. Via secure software, of course, that's the secret sauce, right? The mm-hmm. software that makes mm-hmm. it all work, you know. Um, it'll allow you to access those files over the internet. Nice. So you make your own cloud, your own network attached storage device using this cute little pogo plug device that I'm not really sure what this does. I think this is cable that's, management. Yeah, it's cable management. It looks like it's just to keep everything tidy. It looks kind of floppy, but yeah. it's just there. Yeah, but it's—I mean, it, but it's a clever design. Yeah, and it's nice. It um, makes it bold. I mean, you know, it—it it, it actually like this was one of those things where I saw it. And I'm like, okay, I could see using this. I could see this being something that my mother would enjoy. I could see this being something that I could, you know, plug it in at home, make some use out of it. You could yeah. plug a, an old USB hard drive in. You know, we've all got half a dozen of these things lying around. Yeah. But if you you know if you're on the go, you plug in your your hard drive back at home and you can access it over the internet. So that was actually I think somewhat practical. Yeah. Um, a lot of folks are doing a lot of creative things with Bluetooth. Of course, uh, the drone, which is the um, iPhone controlled by a Wi-Fi, the um, quadcopter that flew around, that was kind of fun. Uh, but Bluetooth headsets, Bluetooth um, you know stereo. A lot of lot of different Bluetooth things. Um, but I mean, that, really those that's old news, kind of, right? I mean, it is. Is there anything like new going on with those? It is kind of old news, but in the same way, it's it's sort of maturing a little bit. Okay. I think that that they're they're becoming more creative. Like one of these here by Blue Ant, you can actually. I mean, you know, this is this is honestly this is a standard Bluetooth headset, right? This is a headset. That a lot, you know, you you put it in your ear, you talk on the phone while you're in your you can car. Put your hand behind it. We don't have the best uh, contrast. There you go. There we go. Hang on. Oh, we're fixing. Okay. I go with the pogo plug line. Use this pillow. There you go. Same way we have a pillow now. See, that's fantastic. Oh, look at that. See, there, there you go. go. Now you see it a lot um, better. But what's neat about this headset is, and I'm not actually sure what value this adds, but it, it's actually you can update the firmware over the internet. Uh huh. So if there are enhancements to the noise cancellation technology, you can do that using. You just plug it into the USB. You can upload it over the internet. It's got all the noise cancellation, all that sort of thing. So really, they're they're designing these better and better. Mm-hmm. It'll also do uh, a a two a two DP, which is the streaming technology. So you get stereo music over this. Okay. Um, somewhat, somewhat slick. Again, we're improving that technology. Not a lot revolutionary there. Yeah. You know, ebook readers, somewhat revolutionary. 3D technology, we've seen it before. We're iterating upon that. The Bluetooth stuff that I saw was was good, not super great. Um, but really, the Consumer Electronics Show this year was a lot about evolving a lot of existing technology, mm-hmm. not a lot of groundbreaking, earth-shattering stuff. Um, one of the things that did make some news, mm-hmm. uh, that, that w- did ca- cause quite a buzz before the CES show the Monday or Tuesday before the show was Google's Nexus One phone. Yes. And I actually have to brag a little bit because um, I not only do I have a Nexus One phone, but I had this at 30 hour a day. Mm-hmm. I had this down here uh, in December. Mm-hmm. I wasn't allowed to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Can't tell you how I got it or why I got it. And I think the battery's dead, which is always loads of fun. 
Um, but the Nexus One is a is a slick Android 2.1 operating system phone. Mm-hmm. It has that real time navigation, turn by turn directions. It's made by HTC, which you've seen a lot of ads for HTC. Mm-hmm. They used to make Windows Mobile phones back in the day. You know, and back in the day, I mean, a year or two ago. Yeah. They've now actually started coming along on their own. Um, the Nexus One is actually a, a solid a solid phone. It's a great device. Mm-hmm. It's um, real easy. Has a great keyboard. Uh, you know, it, it responds to the touch. Uh, How's I'm its battery really, life? The battery life is fantastic, let me tell you. <laughs> Good thing I have power right here. We'll just plug that right in. Um, the, I will say that I've actually started using the Android platform a lot more, and mm-hmm. I think as a phone operating system, it's not the iPhone. Yeah. It doesn't do multimedia as well as the, as the uh, you know, the blue... Android doesn't do multimedia as well as, as the iPhone does. It yeah. doesn't do quite so smooth with the pictures and the video and the music. But... For what it does, the fact that you can do multitasking, the fact that you can, you know, open apps, mm-hmm. it's pretty cool. Okay. And I I like to tell people that if you haven't, you know, if you don't want to switch to AT&T, and who does? Their service is, seriously. Very I questionable. I mean, try using an AT&T phone at the Consumer Electronics Show when all the other geeks are there. Yeah. Like, you're going to South by Southwest, try using your AT&T phone. I yeah, dare no, you. I'm going to have to, like, learn Morse code and get some sort of, like, yeah, no... Or you need a little flare gun. I'm very concerned like about being able something. to find people at South by Southwest for that very reason. I'm like, God. Can we give you a pager? Yeah, I think I need a pager. <laughs> Code four, Dr. Norma's lost. <laughs> All right, we'll get but... walkie-talkies. <laughs> the little pink ones. Breaker, breaker. <laughs> Tarosi, are you there? Breaker, <laughs> breaker, breaker. But good things. Um, I have two more things that I want to show you. I'd like to see them. This uh, by Samsung. Can we put it in a vase of water? No. Oh. Not this one. Darn. Uh, this is the Samsung Dual View. And mm-hmm. you know the problem, right? You take a picture, and you always want to take a picture of yourself. Yeah. But you can't see yourself. So oh, this camera, if you, hi, tap, if you tapped it, oh, dear. Oh. There's actually a, not only is there a display on the back. But I should not know that this exists. But there is a display on the front, so if we can get Cammy off That's a here, bad picture. We can delete that one. I can actually tap the front of the display, and it will show you that there's a screen on the front of the camera. Mm-hmm. And the nice thing about that is if you're taking a picture with, with a couple of people in it, you know, you, you can make get... sure everyone fits. Exactly. So it's got a screen. Not only does it have a screen on the front, so we can see there's Dr. Normal. We can take the picture. There you go. But you've also got the screen on the back of the camera as well. So you've got the dual screen, one on each side, yeah. which is kind of a neat feature if you're one of those folks that takes a lot of pictures. You know, if you're traveling in Europe and you don't want to, like, here, borrow my camera. I'll let you take please a picture. Please run off with my camera. Yeah, would you please you? steal it? That'd <laughs> yeah. be great. That's and, nice. Um, I like that. S- speaking of cameras that you could run off with, mm-hmm. the new Casio XLM. I've been a big fan of Casio's little uh, pocket cameras. Yeah. They're slim, uh, point-and-shoot cameras. Yeah. Good for the sort of that, that secondary camera. You know, if you've got the big digital mm-hmm. SLR, these are super slim cameras. This one's actually waterproof. So you can actually, you know, I don't know, dip it in your cocktail. Yeah, And it'll that's be just nice. fine. Uh Good. Is it good? Yeah, it's good. It's good, it's, good. It's a good drink. I'm glad. Um, but you can actually... Oh, should, should we do that again? Once for camera effect there? Look, I'll just dip my camera in my... I always like it when you come... There we go. See. Just don't put it in my drink, please. Thank you. See, there we go. Yeah. Right. Very nice. I don't know what my drink's going to taste like, or my jeans, for that matter. But you know what? <laughs> um, Casio, uh, this is the EX-G1, mm-hmm. and it's uh, it's about 50 bucks more than the regular model cameras that are mm-hmm. about this size, but it's waterproof, it's shockproof. Um, it's got that YouTube upload mode. This is a good camera for friends and family that like to go snow snowboarding, skiing, yeah. uh, that like to go out, you know, if they take a lot of cruises, you know, you're by the hot tub. Oops, it fell in. Yeah. No problem. You know, you can throw it on the ground You've and still survive. You've got kids that like to dunk things in water glasses. Or in martinis. Martinis. Yeah. I hope hopefully the children won't be dunking As it were. things in martinis. But, and we got one more, something special. Well, but they could, you know, they could be around the adults' martinis. That's true. I'm assuming. That's true. This is, uh, Sony announced at the Consumer Electronics Show, a 1080p full HD uh, video camera. Their predecessor to this was called the Webby. Mm-hmm. So now they've gone up in the world and called it the Bloggy. Yeah, I guess next year's the camera will call it the Tweety. I don't know. I'm, I don't agree with Sony's naming, but... I don't agree with the naming either, however... But this is the HD Bloggy. And if you notice on the top of this camera is a 360-degree lens. This just snaps off. You can get picture here picture back but I can put the lens back on and let me actually show folks watching at home through the miracle of television here what is gonna happen this is gonna be crazy 
I can plug this in Crazy. so everyone can see. Because what it'll do is it'll actually record a 360 degree image of everything going on, on around in the room so you can see. Oh, kind of like the cameras. Hi. Hi. Uh, yeah, it's Cammy. Oh. Um, and the wow. way this does is it actually records the 360 degree image and then it uses software to peel that apart, uh -huh. stretch the image, and then you can actually get a panoramic image so you can zoom around, you can see all different angles from the recording. And then, of course, if you want, you can just take it off and you can use it as a regular camera. You can just have the oh, kind of dark over there, there and the but dark there. Yeah. Apparently, it doesn't like that lighting. No. Um, but you use it as a regular camera. Yeah. It's a rival to the oh, flip, a rival to the uh, the other cameras there. So it's a slick little camera. It's 189 bucks That's to get bad. it with the 360 degree attachment and a memory card. And Sony, bless them, have finally decided that memory card that memory stick is not the future. Hallelujah! So there are actually cameras they're making now with SD card slots. Fantastic! Welcome to the world, Sony. Yay! I would say so. Those are the fun, fun gadgets I brought back from CES. Thank you so much for sharing them with us. Good times. Yay! Yay! Oh, okay, so we've done our gadgety stuff. Gadgets this, done. This is where we should say that normally we would do kind of the little thirty-minute segment. We'd have our tech talk. And then we'd end the show, and then we'd go into after hours. But 2010, we've decided Cammy doesn't like doing two shows every Friday. So we're just doing one show now. I do have the perfect segue. <gasps> I like segues. Not the kind this? that you write. I like, yeah. Mm -hmm, let's go. No. Kind of a little bit sad, but okay. something that's been on the news lately. Okay. Earlier this week, you might have heard, there was a tiny little earthquake that little earthquake. ravaged an entire region. Yes. But... One good thing that has come out of that, everyone in the social media community has just exploded with donations. Correct. Eight million dollars, I think, today. Mm -hmm. It's probably up to ten million. I haven't checked in the last hour. It just exploded. Uh, donations to Haiti. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the earthquake outside of Port-au-Prince. You can text nine zero nine 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 to make a ten dollar donation to the American Red Cross Relief Fund. Mm -hmm. We've talked about it on KXL. It's been big news this week. It's amazing. Like. Every once in a while, I'm reminded of how social media can have the power to do so much good. Mm -hmm. And this, to instead me, of was everyone one just of sitting around and bitching, we can exactly. actually be helpful. Yeah. The airline lost my luggage. The airline lost my luggage. We can actually, I feel like we can do something. We can actually take part in something. And I, I have to say that, you know, I first heard this, I'm like, oh, it's one of those things, you know. But then watching the sheer volume of people actually becoming connected, becoming involved. Yeah. Made me proud a little bit. A little bit? A little, proud. Just a little bit proud. A little proud. Made me very proud. But I have to make a confession. Yes. I haven't yet. You haven't yet? Get on it. Can I do that now? Yes, you may. Where's my phone? I don't know. Sorry, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hijack this show yeah. to make my donation. There you go. Let's do that right now. Doctor Normal? Yeah? Let's yeah. do that. Doctor Normal's gonna go ahead and do the same thing. We're we're all gonna we're going to text in our donation. Kimmy, right. you you have permission to use your phone if you I want. I do. I'm allowed segment. to use my phone right now? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, once again, uh, that number is... 90999. Text now. We'll just take a little break while everyone grabs their phone. Yeah. Our studio audience is grabbing their phone. Okay. Well, it's Nine. not a studio audience. Those are all actually, like, they're all actually, you know, working members of the Strange of Life staff this evening. So, text... Uh, so, wait. You go to the... Oh, yeah. You go to the text. Oh, or you could go up there. I can go up here. Okay, we'll go to this camera. Okay. I don't know if you can see on this camera. So I'm texting. But I, what's the number? Just text the word Haiti yeah. to 90999. We'll wait. Don't worry. 90. What's it? 90999. Oh, you're missing a 9 there, Doc. I am. 90999 and just text the word Haiti, huh? H-A-I-T-I. -I. Mm -hmm. You didn't know how to spell it. No, so this, it's got to look like this. Yeah. Wait, somebody? Bueller. <laughs> Anybody? Okay, so oh. I've got the wrong thing on here, right? Yeah, you need to add an extra nine. So okay. this is what it'll say. I've texted 90999, and it'll say, free message to confirm your $10 donation to Red Cross Haiti relief efforts. Reply with yes. Reply help for help or visit Red Cross. Is it, do you need the dash? No, the, it'll put the it in there for you. I puts the dash in there because it, it segregates out the numbers. Okay. I just so it, it should hit, send me a yes. it should send me a reply soon. Yeah, it's gonna send you a reply that looks Is like that. Is that right? I'll wait. I'm waiting for my reply. Okay, I'm doing mine on the screen there. There you go. 
ten ten dollars, and you don't get charged for the text message. Right? Yeah, you know uh, the text carriers decided uh, oh, yeah. Verizon. Sprint, AT&T, they Comply all decided with, they yes. were going to donate the text messages for you to give money. So okay, I'm, I'm done. I've and now you, added ten dollars to my cell phone bill for Red Cross Haiti relief. And you say Haiti? Uh, yes. In yes. The subject. Word, Haiti. Yes. No, Haiti. just no, no, just in the body. There's no subject. Right. It's a text. Send, send Haiti. H A H A I T I T I to nine zero nine 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 zero nine nine H A I T I send. And then that's ten dollars charged to your phone, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It'll charge your cell phone bill, but it will not charge you the okay. extra for that text message. Yeah, you so. don't get the for the three text messages. You don't get charged. So um, I I would just like to say that we made at least thirty, forty, fifty bucks for mm-hmm. the Red Cross. Um, so right. thank you all for there that. It is. I just um, stole that. All right, I'm gonna. Excellent. I gotta thank turn you. my. Unfortunately, oh, I no. turn. let's let's look at this. This is actually a good oh, thing. Oh no! Let's take a look at this message. There we go. Yes, due to high volume, it may take up to 48 hours before your donation is posted to your mobile service. It says, due to high volume. Nice. Reply yes to receive the latest updates. I don't want spam. I just want to get 10 bucks. Yeah, that's that's bad form. No, no, no spamming us once we've donated, please. Seriously. But there you go. I should take all the demo phones that they gave me. And and just text. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they're never going to let me have a phone again. No, they're like, oh, they we won't. can't trust you. i got to put my phone to see. This is the problem. I pick up my phone. Now you're playing Words with Friends, aren't you? I'm not. I am. We, we need to start a new game. Words with we're Friends. Da- we don't have... We're, we're done. Right, we you know what? I'm going to start a game really quick, and then I'll turn my phone off. <laughs> so I was going to ask you okay. a question. Yes. Uh, someone said in the chat room that the Blazers raised uh, 65000 uh, tonight for Haiti. Do you know about that? Um... At the at the game, yeah. Well, I was at the game earlier. Yeah. I had no idea there was the money. Did huh. they put up okay. a thing to raise uh, to I text guess. in or? I don't know. Who knew? Who um, knew? <laughs> I was actually no. I I have to say that like as many of you know, I used to work for the Blazers. I was the internet director for three years for the Blazers. Um, I had a blast of a good time at the Blazers. Is that your your screen name for the? Uh, without the M. Okay. Uh, and then I uh, went to a game tonight. Uh, so. Flew in, beer and blog, Blazers game. And I get these Busy tickets. Busy day for you. Average. <laughs> get these tickets. I have no idea. Like, I get the tickets. I, I go in. I walk into the door. And we're up on the club level. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I got the tickets from a good friend of mine. Yeah. Go, in, go into the uh, the seats. And there's these uh, there's this line of people. There's this buffet of food spread out. And there's this line of people. Mm-hmm. You know, whenever there's a buffet, I'm thinking, like, what do they, what do they have that I... Like, how do I get in on this? Yeah. So then I find out that you need a uh, all inclusive ticket. To, to and enjoy with the all inclusive ticket, you get a purple wristband. Mm-hmm. And the purple wristband apparently is good for the buffet. It's good for the food. You can get pizza. You can get the popcorn. You can mm-hmm. get whatever you want. And I thought, well, that's kind of cool. But then I discovered that you could get candy out of it. Oh, no. So here, Cammy, I brought you some presents. I brought you some chocolate. Thank you. Here you go. Here's some Snickers. Thank you. Um, I, I think our guest audience needs a red vine. And here you go. I have a red vine, Dr. Ronald. Well, there you go. So sweet. Love to share. That's so sweet of you. I had you. more pizza and buffet food than I get. It was a little embarrassing. Yeah. A little embarrassing. But it was fun. We had a Feeling really a good time hungry. at the game. I had a really good time at the game, and of course, then we had to leave to come here. Yes, I'm sorry. Wasn't actually hungry because I left at, or I, um, I ate at, uh, at Beer and Blog. So let's talk about Beer and Blog. Two years. Two? I mean, let's be fair. Two years isn't a long time. Like, it's two, two years. Two years isn't years. a long time in the state, but, but in, in the internet cool. world. Pretty darn cool. I'm. And I cannot be more proud and more excited about what Justin and Christy and the whole gang has done with Baron Blog. I know. I think it's amazing. It's amazing. And did you see the turnout tonight? Yes, I did. Alaska Air was there. Horizon yes. Air was there. Props to them. They bought the beer tonight. That was fantastic. Packed house. Literally, you couldn't. Packed it was house. like beyond standing room only. You couldn't. Cool. You, well, you can. Yeah, no. And you know what? I saw one of my friends across the room, and I was like, eh, I'll uh, yeah. see him some other time. Yeah. I saw Whatever. Cammy. I saw Cammy across the room. I'm like, I'll see you later. Yeah, I know. <laughs> was, I'll be at your house yeah. in a couple hours. Um, it's fine. And the other thing is, like, I I was recording a, a segment for the Square that airs on Monday night, seven o'clock. KGW check local listings. 
Um, it's at seven. Why do you check your local listings? And it's KGW, <laughs> and those are the local listings. But whatever. <laughs> camera guy, you with me? You with the camera guy? Camera guy. We on camera three? Camera three? You're blocking me. Anyway. Yeah, I was blocking your shot. Nice, nice work. But I can block your shot. Oh. Hi. So um, I just want to remind everyone that on Monday I'll be on KGW at seven o'clock uh, live. <laughs> at the square. That's a horrible shot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's nice. Yeah. Thanks. Yes. By the so, way, in your seven o'clock KGW. Check out. Yeah, Brian. we're done with that. By the way, mm-hmm. anybody that just saw that saw that shot, they're not tuning in. Yeah, that was a bad shot. Was, this is like, your camera. That camera is spe- specially set just you know for my pasty face. Again, twelve cameras in the studio now. I know, I have one just for me. There are more cameras in this studio than there are at KGW. That's true. I've been in KGW. <laughs> there are more cameras here than there are at the KGW it's, it's Square a, it's Studio. It's a true studio. It's yeah. a true studio yeah. story. Yeah, that's um, scary. It's what was scary. I Ours don't move around, though. Yeah, no, they, they like... Yeah. And then when they... Like rrr, rrr, little rrr, crazy rrr, robot rrr, mind of their own. Rrr, rrr, rrr. Take over the world someday. It's like, no, we're just trying to get a shot. Man, rrr, no, the robot rrr, cameras rrr, and the MakerBot, rrr. they're going to get together and... <laughs> Wonder Twin Activate. <laughs> the world is done. End. Then we're all in trouble. There'll be a video podcast everywhere. Which I think is actually... I, I actually think that's Dr. Normal's dream for robotic cameras to take over the world. Probably. He's like, what? I guess then we could live in London or somewhere, right? Perhaps. Yeah. Where it rains cats and room. dogs. I thought I thought he was going down a David Tennant route for me. No. Oh. I thought he was going to do another impersonation, but... Oh, I thought we were going to do Doctor Who time. What do you think of, uh, what do you think of the late night debate? To be honest, you don't care. I don't because I don't watch TV. Uh, can however, we make our announcement. However, do, 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 I, I, do, 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 I've do, do, never do. really found Jay Wait, Leno entertaining. Are at all. you replacing Leno? Cami Chaos. Cami Chaos is replacing Jay Leno. Yeah. Who's replacing Conan O'Brien? I don't want to replace Conan O'Brien. I like Conan. But wait. I don't uh, watch, but I used to, and I find so him very Cammy entertaining. So Cami Chaos is replacing Conan O'Brien, who replaced Jay Leno, who replaced Johnny. Oh no, I'm Conan confused. O'Brien's going to take over my show. Yeah. Who do you think the new host of Mean PDX is going to be? Well, I did announce uh, this week on Mean PDX that I was getting rid of Rick. Really? Did you tell Rick that? He knows. I told him on air. Actually, Rick has a few things he wanted to say to you tonight. So, what? Say to me? Yeah. No, no, no. No. Yeah. He says no. No. What? He's concerned. I I actually think that Rick Tarosi could replace Conan O'Brien. Okay, but. So Rick is a little concerned, and we need to talk about this. Do we need to talk about this in front of this live studio audience? Yeah. So can we roll color bars or something? No, we... no, it's okay. They can know. We have no secrets from them. <laughs> yeah, of course not. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just wondering if I want to hear this in front of It's everyone. about you. Oh, it's about me. Oh, okay. Am I in trouble again? I'm always in trouble. Rick has been on the show as a guest more times than anyone else. Okay. And you're, you're getting uncomfortably close to that number. All right. So when is Rick scheduled next? We don't, we, we don't. No, we don't have anything. That's not strange to live. We don't have anything scheduled for him. But I will say this: it doesn't count if the person who has been a guest, if if, if he is still the mayor of your house <laughs> on Foursquare, it doesn't matter how many times I've been on the show. I could be on the show every week from now until the end of 2010, and as long as he's still mayor, doesn't count. Does that make you feel better, Rick? Doesn't count. Yes, it does. Okay. Yeah. All right, we're good then. <laughs> All right, that problem has now been solved. You, Happy to help. Thank you for being so sensitive. Cheers. I did not Happy want to have help. to deal with this next week because we've been ugly. Ugly. I, I, I don't. I... Rick, would you like to trade me places right now and then no. you get half credit? No. No. I get half credit, you get half credit? No. No, it's okay. You can stay. He's a big boy. I just I wanted no one to have hurt feelings. I think we, we solved that. Okay. And and by the way, I'm not checking into the Strange Love Live Studios. Be, uh, the, sorry, I will not check into the secret underground bunker. Mm-hmm. Can't believe I got that out with a straight face. Yeah, that's good. Um, actually, I didn't, but that's another story. No. Uh, without, I, mean, I will not check in tonight, so as Rick can maintain his mayorship. Can I be honest with you? Mm. I can't oust him as mayor of my own house. <laughs> So I I, You're done. I just don't think that, that that's an issue for you. You should move. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Okay. That would solve the problem. I have a, I have a question. I have, I have a question for the room. <laughs> just move. Why, why was that so funny? 
<laughs> Why did the entire room erupt when I said you should just move? Because it was funny. Oh, Your okay. best line that ever. Was, that was yeah. really good. I like okay, that. Okay. If that's my best line on the show, no. you really need a new guest. Really. I, I try to teach you shtick. I mean, remember the you... iPhone box incident at uh, the after hours party? Are we having a memory lane time? Bridge? We're I'm, having a memory I'm lane I'm still time. stuck on the helmet cam. Oh, yeah. oh, eight. Yeah. Was it 08? I don't know. I know. They're mounted yeah. up on the wall for posterity. Yeah. If you haven't been we, to the secret we should have a, location. We should have a helmet cam cam. Yes. Yeah. Like a static we shot need, that we just need points a, up at the... We need an extra camera in the it's studio. Actually or a, a mirror. I could just like... Can we just like... Can you see it? Can anyone see it? Mm-hmm. It's actually up there. It's not uh, ready yet, though. I didn't have time. <laughs> is, he, is he joking? I'm not I can't sure. tell. I'm afraid... I think the next true. I re- actually no, we do have a helmet cam. Oh, there you go, there you go. Pop, Let's go. pop, pop it in. We'll just we'll just show everyone here. Is the lighting I, good I enough? Camera po- yeah. in my pocket. No, it's probably just gonna be blinded like everything else. I'm sitting here holding the bloggy uh, MP4 camera. That's the anything. dumbest name for a camera. Yeah, I'm not really getting anything. Oh, you're not getting anything. All right, well, oh, yeah. I know why. Because you don't have the input on. Pop it in. Yeah. Now I got Hold it. My 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 bad. Check your hair. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. What's this going on? I thought no, it was this is a whole other. How about I just set this here? Yeah. And then when point. you get a pot of that, I'm not getting anything. All right. Well, is it on? It's on. Oh, wait, no. I just, camera I guy, is the camera on? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. There it is. Bluggy. Oh. There oh, it is. There's oh, the there helmet go. cams. So that is Check the. Those, those are the helmet cams. I'm just gonna leave this here, and you can just come back to this shot whenever you need it. Yeah. <laughs> helmet cam cam. There we go. <laughs> Can, can. <laughs> can you can you do the look? He's, just, he's got now. Yeah. I think we just made his night right there. Yeah, the helmet there. cam cam. <laughs> the those, debut of helmet cam cam. You know those helmet cams. Everyone loves them. They don't really work that well. I know they don't. They're horrible. You you had. <laughs> They're horrible. Oh, did he just cut off my mic? I think he just. Cut. No, no, but you he had, wanted you had a. a Helmet cam news. I think oh, the I yes. saw. Yeah. Let me, uh, I'll, I'll show you the. I'll show the picture. We can show everyone at home the picture since we have iPhone cam now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. I was at the Consumer Electronics Show and I saw a bunch of things that reminded me of a bunch of people. Mm-hmm. And one of them was this camera, and I was excited about it until I saw it and I asked the guy, you know, does this do video? Does live video? Whatever. What's the story? Excuse me. And he told me. He said. Uh, he said, Oh no, it's just a static camera. It's, and I'm like, really? It's just it's, like, over it, here. No, it just it records video. It just records there video. And I'm like, this just records video. It, like it's like a little camcorder. Oh no, this is just camcorder. I'm like, all right. So you're telling me that all this does is record video, like into a little camcorder? That's boring. Yeah. Back in Portland at the Strange Love Live Studios, you may have heard of them. They have live video on the air. Not right now, but hold it steady. No. Oh, hold it well, steady. no. I mean, we do. It's just not of what you want it to be of. There I wonder how many people we have... can edit this out post, right? right there. I wonder there how many people. So there's have... the picture. Yeah. This, by the way, is the high tech way of getting a photo on the live stream. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're fancy. It's Aztec, really though. fancy here. They they uh. Aren't they the company that makes the? They actually make cameras. So the deal is, is that company makes the cameras that are currently on the helmet cam. On the helmet cam. Let's go to the helmet cam cam. Yep. So those oh, cameras are actually the same <laughs> manufacturer. Isn't that great? The helmet cam cam. Those were made the day of the OS Bridge at like Can this at be the, the audience cam cam. Yeah, it's not an audience. We don't have it. We had to rip out Studio B to have people here this evening. Whatever. It was Look, sad. they're getting ready for Meme PDX. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, Rick's back there trying to film one last episode before <laughs> I kick him off the show. <laughs> That's what a good is it strategy, doing? What Rick. is it doing? It's trying to identify people. You know, Rick, let, like me give you a little, let me give you a little... <laughs> targeting. It is. Targeting. Well, can you guys see that? It looks like it's targeting me. Uh, the, like the I'm Sony taking Hockley is, out. Oh, that, 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 that's Jordan there, my that friend. And what, what it's out. doing is it's actually like highlighting the face. So mm-hmm. they can say, there's a face here. Yeah. And it'll like facial oh, recognition. It'll it be like... Hockley's gonna die. It really... Pew, pew, pew. This camera is gonna join up with the MakerBot and the, and the robot camera. World's over. Awesome. We're done. We're and actually, facial when we, recognition. When we put the, uh, when we put the and the world is going to on, end. And then it's really over. <laughs> then it's really... Does it do the facial recognition with the 360 no. lens? Okay. Yeah, it's gonna too much. And I feel a little safer. So cool. 2011 CES, I'll bring back a camera that does facial recognition with the... My God, and it's, it's and, it, and then it plays back in 3D. Yes, in 3D, on ice. Dave, 
I don't Did really think you should do that, Dave. The Simpsons? I don't watch TV. It reminds me of Hal. Like the 2001 when Hal was looking at the astronauts and big circle. Raise your hand if you have gonna any idea. Use that particular function for something completely do, different do, than what you're using for um, now. That's... So the Simpsons. Uh-huh. Was it the 30th episode or the 20th episode? 20, 30? I don't know. This is where Sorry. my 20th episode. Uh, 20th, 20th anniversary. Season. 20th season or 20th year? 20th year, I think. 20th anniversary. Yeah, it was a Simpsons 20th anniversary. Okay. And if I need any more phone of friends on that line, we're, we're done. But... Uh, they did a great, they did a great recap, kind of 20 year, um, I'm blanking on a Morgan, Morgan. Freeman? Fairchild? Morgan. That did the, the, the guy that did the, the, <laughs> hosted the, um, the, the special. The chat room will tell us. All right. So go to the chat room. We'll figure it out. Someone tell us um, something. We're blank, floundering uh, Morgan here. something. Anyway, whatever. Did a great job. Gave some great props to Portland. Of course, a lot of. The Simpsons, based on Portland city's uh, streets, a lot of the characters, Flanders, mm-hmm. all of the, based on streets in Portland. Um, some great props to Portland. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was some Voodoo Donut mention. Mm-hmm. A lot of you know, uh, he went to Portland and filmed some of this stuff. Um, but there were just a lot of really fun things about The Simpsons that you didn't know. But the title of the episode I thought was brilliant: The Simpsons 20th Anniversary Special in 3D on ice. So then at the very end, you saw these really blurry with, like, color lines around it, like faux 3D, mm-hmm. of Simpsons characters running around on ice. So they did. They delivered, as promised, Simpsons 3D on ice. Do you like a lot of things on, like, shows on ice? No. Are you a big fan of the ice capades? No, I just thought it was clever that they were making... Fu- it's like... it's Making like the, polite conversation. It's like the Portland Twitter storm team, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, let's just make fun of all of this. And it was mm-hmm. like, 3D on ice. It's like, let's throw more buzzwords in there. Mm-hmm. Morgan Spurlock? That was Morgan it. Spurlock. Thank you. See, chat room's good for something. That's, that's they're also they're also good for like. Who gave us? Who gave us the answer? Uh, Porto Ooh. traffic. Thank you very much. Porto traffic. Yep. Yeah. Porto traffic. Good tweet. Nice. Tweet. Hey, I also have to give props to someone else. Okay. Is this is this time to give props? Yes, it's prop that- giving time, and then it's plugging Brian time. So we'll have to like promote the website and. The- no, I thought that it was eating um, red vine time. Uh, you gave away all the red vines. I gave away all the red vines. Um, no, but I want to say that uh, back to the Consumer Electronics Show, uh-huh. we had a really good time down there, and every year it seems that someone new comes to CES for the first time. Mm-hmm. A couple of years ago, a blogger friend of mine down in San Francisco, I kind of showed him the ropes, whatever. But this year, I had the opportunity to introduce Jason Harris, who runs the blog TechGraver.com. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh, I had the pleasure of introducing him to CES, kind of showing him around a little bit. He, like... Figured it out, took off, like, I couldn't keep up with him. But uh, it was fun to see him down there. It was, it's always fun to hang out with, with people that you don't get to spend a lot of time with. Uh, we had a really good time at Vegas. But I got to tell you, like, the giddy sort of, like, first-time anticipation, like, planning out his schedule. And I'm like, I'm like, wait, what are we supposed to do tonight? And he's got the, the PDF of all the programming. All There's this party and this party and this party. I'm like, I remember when I had that energy for CES. And I'm like, I'll show up. And if I get to a party or two or like event or see people, whatever. But it was a really good time. Jason Hare was there at techcraver.com. He uh, is writes a lot of fun reviews. And I actually have learned a thing or two. Nice. Or so, Is that a Portland blog? He, he actually he works in Portland, lives in yeah. Salem, but it's certainly so based here. He's been to Beer and Blog every once in a while. Uh, this was he works like every other Friday or something, mm-hmm. and so I think this was his Friday off, so he couldn't come to Beer and Blog this week. But sometimes, but he's been around. Yeah. He's a nice guy, Jason Harris, Harris J A on the on the tweets. Oh yeah, as it were. Um, How's the 360 Cam Cam doing? Well, well, uh, while out, while like, we're taking a look at the 360 Cam Cam. Oh look, this is how it's doing. Oh, Dave, is the battery dead? Yeah, the battery just died. Okay. And oh, I didn't, I didn't get the, yeah, I didn't get the, uh, it was flashing the little unhappy battery. Sad battery. Daisy, Daisy. Oh, there it is. Oh, see? Oh, <laughs> Give me sad. your Nice. All right, well, good thing we had our fun with that. And oh. oh. The, so that, there's uh, a, there's so, a 360 lens over there on the other side of the studio. It's so nice 3D. It detaches we got to ask about 3D. So we talked a little bit about 3D. Oh, I should have brought my 3D glasses. So, and you were saying. I have some in the other room. I do too. From the Super Bowl, I have like a sheet of them. Yes, <laughs> yeah, we have, we have several those. sheets of those. Even though I don't watch the Super Bowl. 
um, or the 3D. Like, we just we got the glasses because we could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I got them. Yeah. So have you seen the Avatar movie yet? You know, I hate to admit, I think I'm the one person that hasn't seen yeah, Avatar. We haven't no, seen I haven't seen it. You haven't it. seen it either? No. Anybody, yeah. When are you going? Anybody go seen Avatar? No. Yeah, no one in this room has seen Avatar. <laughs> we haven't been indoctrinated but I, yet. But I bet the entire chat room has seen Avatar. Yeah. Probably. They're the ones that get out. We're just down here, you know. We're down in the subterranean dungeon. Yeah, they're not, they're not podcasting. They Actually, have time for Avatar. The entire chat room is Fat Boy Roberts, so that would yes. be correct. Yes. Yes. I, Fat Boy I, Roberts says. Just seen. kidding. I don't. I don't know that I've actually met Fat Boy Roberts in person. Oh, I know. He Fat was. Boy, oh no, he was we, gone by the time you got back. But you know why? It's because I was out on location tap dancing. Yeah. As producer Aaron calls it. Thank you for that. Or BSing. One of the two. I'm like, okay, great, whatever. Um, and but apparently he drew comparisons to what he was wearing and what I was wearing, which today is you guys somewhat both similar. like the sweatery. The sweatery kind of look. Yeah. It was a good. It's a good look. The and sweater vest kind of. Watching look. the thirty hour day replay mm-hmm. and seeing him on the show mm-hmm. from what I saw when he was on the show when I was on location. Yeah. Um, I think it's a look we both sport well. I I would agree. So someday I would certainly agree with you. Someday maybe we'll collaborate and do something. Like, yeah. I don't know. Sweater yeah, so do convention. Or... John Helmer commercials or something. Together. <laughs> it would be awesome. It'll be memorable as it were. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. Or not. Yeah. No. You guys both do the you know. Dapper gentlemen. Both come from radio. Yeah. You know. Yeah. He's smart. I'm not. So, you know, we have that in common. Aww, that working for us. I that's so sad. I know. It is kind of sad, I'm so actually. sad for you. <laughs> right. He, he says we we rock the look well, Brian. Oh, It's true. You, you guys do. Thank yeah. you. So, we'll have to... I, I, I feel also, like you want to know what else you guys have in common? Open invitation. No, this we'll is important. Coffee. This is yeah. something else you have in common. And I've told him this before. And it goes... We both love for, Kami. For court as well. Okay. Well, okay, sure. You guys can love me. That's fine. Uh, wasn't where I was going. Very cute. Yeah, all, all very, very cute for radio. Like you know, you always the radio people. You always Face like, for radio. You, you always like it in the dungeon with the radio and then not like that's what you picture because you're like God, you're on the radio. You guys are all very, very attractive. At a previous station that shall remain nameless. Okay. Because of course, everyone that works at the stations I work for now, all completely attractive. Yes. Great people. Yes. Love them dearly. At a previous station in a market not Portland. Not Seattle. This shall remain nameless. Okay. Some definite face for radio. Mm-hmm. Definite face for yeah, radio. Yeah, no. That's something else you guys have in common. Scary. I'll, I'll let Wait, you be on. Wait, we both have face for radio? No, I'll let oh. you be on my show. You're pretty. Okay. Are you saying only pretty people get to be on your show? No, I'm not. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, because you let Dr. Normal on, so. Oh. To be fair, I also married Dr. Normal. What's that say about you? I have good taste. Uh, I'm exactly. taking my cameras and I'm out of here. <laughs> I said I have good taste. <laughs> Too bad we can't go to Cam Cam anymore. Can't, can't, yeah. Helmet, yeah. Helmet Cam Cam would be, this is the Cam Cam. Oh, Cam Hi, Cam. Hi, Cam. Cam. Cam, Cam, Cam. The it's Helmut Cam Cam, 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 Cam is Cam, Cam. dead. dead. We're going 3D next week. We on not. ice? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sweet. I can't wait till we Dr. get 3D Normal on ice. Dr. Normal doesn't ice skate. No. Dr. Normal also doesn't do 3D. No. Yeah. I th- I I still think it's a fad. 3D? I mean, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it it's just it's until not I can there have yet. a hollow deck, I don't give a crap about 3D. Yeah, if you can 3D. do it without the glasses, it's still really. You do it without the what? The glasses? glasses. Yeah. yeah. You know, what got the me goggles. though is what I'm hearing about this 3D technology, and the glasses are forty five dollars. Yeah. You could buy a flat screen TV for that. So give me like eighteen of them, and I'll feel like it's 3D. Well. Yeah. I mean, at some point, just, how? No. At, at some point, how I much money care. do I spend on a TV to replicate reality when I can go to that reality cheaper? You know what I do when I watch TV? Like if <laughs> I watch, minute, if I watch the TV, fair. I just <laughs> sit down with my little laptop. <laughs> what are you talking? Without about? the big screen, now I have a big screen on my just laptop. Get no, I just set the laptop on the laptop table and I watch whatever the heck I want to watch on my laptop. You know, and that's the other interesting. If I want to watch a movie, is, I put it on the TV. But you know, since we're talking about the consumer electronics show, or we were, I mean, well, I don't know what we're talking about now, but we're if just we were, talking now. It's fine. Um, in two thousand seven, the okay. big headline was HD DVD versus Blu-ray, mm-hmm. and there was a theory going around that Apple and Microsoft intentionally prolonged that debate. So that DVDs in general, like the discs themselves... Would have would, a longer lifespan? No, would become oh. completely obsolete. Huh. Because the longer the battle raged on, the less consumers adopted the technology, the more they would go to things like digital downloads. And of course, at the CES show this year, you can, you can get Netflix on everything. I think this camera does Netflix downloads now. Your iPod, your i, you know, the, 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 you can get the box... 
the the TiVo does Netflix downloads. Everything will do Netflix on your computer, Netflix in your car, Netflix in your backpack, Netflix everywhere. Was that I, I was going to ask? Is that was I that the, hot, the Netflix streaming? The, I mean, the whole Roku box and TiVo you know, and the, all that. Actually, I, I didn't even talk about it, but the hottest Boxing? item. The hottest item at the Consumer Electronics Show, the number one, like, one last guy just standing. I mean, it's a geek, sort of like, you know, the geeks love it, and that's sort of the item. Those are the items that, that go up to the top. Boxy Box. Yeah. yeah. Boxy made by box. D-Link. It's a slick little box. It's a black box. And I I, I put one in my pocket, but the security, like, mm. no. It said no. Poor Brian. Is it available? Uh, I think it's available later this spring. Like, I don't okay. think it's that far away, if I remember correctly. But it's it's a it's a cube, and they did a clever little design on it. They made this cube with the notch out of the bottom, so it stands on it sits on top of your consumer electronics. So you know, how, like everything is a set top yeah. box. You can yeah. stack these devices. This one actually sits on top of all those devices, and you can't put anything above it. Wow! Always be the king of the heap. Nice. That there boxy box. Uh, it's made by D-Link, the folks that make routers and other networking equipment. Uh, it's called the Boxy Box, and it runs the Boxy, uh, which is a video streaming software. Yeah. You can mm-hmm. record shows. You can stream uh, shows off the internet. Uh, it, and it, it also pulls all of you. Every other week, it does Hulu. And you can load the, Boxy on your computer too. Yeah, absolutely. You yeah, can you run can it, run it on, on Apple your TV, computer. Yeah. Well, Apple uh, Mac know. Mini. You can we, you can run it on your Apple TV, but uh, don't recommend it. But, yeah. well, you no, can it, watch it, Strange Love Live on Boxy. It is by the way, a, we uh, distribute through Boxy. It, did you know that it's Strange Love Live is available method. on the That's Boxy? Right. Yeah. If you have a Boxy box, you can get Strange Love Live. That's right. Also, you can watch Strange Love Live on Apple TV and on Roku. On Roku. On Roku. Yeah. I have a Roku. TiVo TBD. Yeah, no, I think you can, can't you? Well, can, can. I don't remember. I don't have my TiVo anymore. Just says waiting for approval. I got rid of the TiVo oh. when we got rid of our cable. I like my TiVo. I loved my TiVo. The TiVo yeah. was the only thing keeping me from getting rid of cable I cannot for like wait. a year. Let me tell you what. I cannot wait. And I just earlier this earlier this evening, I was with Stephanie Strickland, and we were talking about um, a bunch of things. But one of the things that we talk about the last couple of months is the Olympics. We're both going up there. Mm-hmm. Um, she's going up there to work. I'm going up there to spend a lot of money and get drunk. Nice. And uh, the Olympics are coming up, and I cannot wait. Like, the Olympics were made for TiVo. TiVo was made for the Olympics. Have you ever tried to sit through the opening ceremonies? Let me tell you something about myself. Like, I'm going to... You don't have the attention span even to hit the fast forward button. No. But... I don't watch the Olympics. It's it's TV. I don't watch sports so much. I don't don't generally watch sports either. But the Olympics, you have to watch on TiVo. Really? I have to watch... No. I don't watch the Olympics. If you're going to watch the Olympics, which doesn't qualify... Oh, no, no. That's fair. If you're going to watch the Olympics, you have have to watch them on TV. No, yeah. You know, I might watch... Sometimes I, I used to do gymnastics... I was a gymnast, and so okay. I'll watch the gymnastics because, you know, that's what you, that's what you do when, when, when you used to, like, play a sport and you can't anymore. You watch it. You're like, I uh, could have kicked her ass. No, I couldn't have. But still, <laughs> but at the funny. same time, it's fun to watch it and be like, God, that was but does she stuck the landing. Does she have a podcast now? No. No, she does not. Does she co-host Mean PDX with Rick Terosi? Well, well with, actually, with didn't new, she used to? Well, I'm still going to... Yeah, no. The problem is, is he doesn't let me introduce the show. He always does the introductions. So I have to get a new co-host that will let me introduce the show. I don't want to introduce the show. Please don't make me. So, wait. <laughs> he doesn't let me do something I don't want to do. Yeah, shh. I just... Your logic fails me. It, yeah, it does often fail most people. Kind of like my logic fails me yeah. all the time. That's but. why we get along. Right. Because yeah. we're both ridiculous. Yeah. And and, and at some point, and I, our official timekeeper over here will tell us how long it's been. I know exactly how long. We Look. No, no. I'm, I'm, trying, to, I'm oh. trying to figure out, at what point did the show go from semi-interesting to completely ridiculous? We had 20 minutes of good content. Yes. 20 rec- minutes. Is that a record? Is that a record? We did 20 minutes of solid, solid content about actual things before we like derailed and it I turned know into the, the Brian and Cammy show. Say. Yeah, but you know what? It's fine. Um, you're yeah. now sounding like Spock. I am? Yeah. Why? Oh, speaking of Spock. <laughs> okay. This is completely and totally random. Do we get to talk about the Star Trek movie? Because that was from last year, but I totally loved that movie. I, I have one Brett last Spiner. question. Brett Spiner. Okay. Yeah. 
was <laughs> I at thought it was Brent a, Spiner. Not, Brent oh. Spiner, sorry. What did I say? Brett. Uh, yeah, Brent Spiner, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Brent Spiner. Diesel Boy Spiner. <laughs> Diesel <laughs> Boy Spiner. Yeah, right. That's Christ actually Jesus. Brett. He's Diesel Boy is right. Brett. I know. Right. And now we're on to Brent. Don't, you, 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 the and the names Barbert. need to be right. Okay. I'm name dropping Brent now. Brent Spiner so and the Barbert. I'm name dropping. Okay. I'm name dropping. Do tell. Right. So the Parnassus Group up in Seattle is a... Uh, I don't actually really... I have no idea what they do. Okay. But whatever. They do Twitter conferences. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't matter. Okay. They do a party every year called It Won't Stay in Vegas. And it's at the Atomic Testing Museum. And if you watched the Square Live at 7 last week, I did a little live remote from there via Skype. Mm -hmm. And at that party, LeVar Burton and Brent Spiner... Now I want to say Brent. Brent Spiner were there. And both very, very cool people. Very nice. And it was fun. And I got, I actually, like, I was taking pictures of everybody. I'm like, mm-hmm. snap, 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 pictures, pictures, pictures. And finally, I'm like, screw this. Stand aside. I'm getting my picture taken with them. That's so cute. It's a little bit cute. You got a little geeky. It's a little bit geeky. Yeah. A little bit geeky. It was fun. It was a, it was a great party. It was mm-hmm. lots, lots of fun. Good time. Uh, and then we went, then we crashed the BlackBerry party afterwards. Mm-hmm. That's what we should have done in the content section. We should have just talked about all the parties I crashed this week. And now you're um, out of time. You got like two minutes left. Great. This will be quick. We went to the BlackBerry party. They had these screens up on the wall mm-hmm. that you could text in. Of course, the first thing I did is I took a picture of the G1 and I put it up on the screen. Uh-huh. And then I find out later. Well, I mean, you got to. You're at this party sponsored by BlackBerry. And I'm like, look, hot new phone. Here, take a picture of this. Not a BlackBerry. Not a BlackBerry. You're a troublemaker. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. I know it's part You're of You're just our... now learning? No. Right. No, I'm not for a while. So I send this up to the screen and then later I find out that the only people that were allowed, like there was a white list. You had to be on the special list to be able to post things to the screen. What the point of that? They... You had to be pre approved wow. to send messages up to the the screens inside the venue. That's that's stupid. stupid. Anyway, whatever, the booze was free, we had a couple of drinks, then we bailed. Um then we went to Tao, which is super exclusive inside the Venetian Hotel. It's a swanky place. Um, Blackberry was also hosting bottle service. So we had a couple of drinks there, Blackberry too. really took good care of you that evening. They did take good care of me. And I, I probably I feel a little bit guilty for sending a picture of the N1 up to the screen that never made it up on the screen. Mm-hmm. You can't feel guilty for something that didn't actually Didn't actually occur. happen. Yeah. So if, if, if everyone watching, if nobody tells Blackberry, mm-hmm. maybe they'll let me off the hook. Okay, I Just won't guessing. tell them. Mike. Don't tell them. We crashed that party. Then we went to Tao. Mm-hmm. Um, and <laughs> my friends at Ogizmo, which is a blog, ogizmo.com, O-H-G-I-Z-M-O.com, tech blog, good people, meet up with them at CES every year. But uh, they decided that the party was boring. Mm-hmm. So I <laughs> found some girls and was a little more entertaining then. The Blackberry yeah. folks were boring. Yeah. They're sitting there like... I'm like, it's bottle service. There's a big bottle of booze right there. They're bringing you mixers. What do you want? Yeah, no. I, I recall, I our, recall our friend uh, Martin's uh, discussions about Nokia parties in Europe. Nokia. 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 Yeah. And speaking of... Because um, apparently the vodka was flowing. Speaking of the bottle service, though, it was really cute. And I won't mention names, but it was really cute. The number of people that are with, the number of bloggers that didn't know what bottle service was mm-hmm. and had never been to a club like that. It's, it's pretty cute. How cute was it? That's it. No okay. names, though. Okay. So with that, I need you to, to, you know, do your, this is where I am. This is where you can find me. Can we ask him one last uh, we can. CES quick question? You we may. Can. Tablet computers. Is yes. that going somewhere this year? Um, It's going to be a big splash this year. There's going to be a lot of headlines around tablet computers. But are I people think... actually going no. to adopt them? No. Okay. I'll tell you why. Because I think that... Apple will come out with something that's very cool uh, late January. Mm -hmm. It'll be cool. It'll be splashy. It'll be fun. It'll be unique. It'll kind of shake things up a bit. But I don't. I don't know that tablet computers are really going to be the be all end all this year. Uh, We may see them in 2011 be something a little more exciting, but this year I don't think so. It'll make some headlines, some big splash, but probably not going to be a big deal. Okay. So on the web. Mm -hmm. On the web. Brian and I'm a, Westbrook on I'm gonna the make web. I'm going to put it back up again. Tech.brianwestbrook.com. Mm-hmm. You can find most everything there. Mm-hmm. And I, I promise you all that I'm getting rid of the blogging. I know. I hear you. When I can sit down long enough, He'll I have a new design. Fix the site. I'll fix the site. Fix okay. it all up. Uh, on Twitter, at BMW. 
Let's see if he has a lower third for that. I was the king of lower third at 30 hour day. Come on. You, come you on. made the best lower thirds. I, I was you, impressed. Seriously, the lower thirds. You know what's really You're, funny about the lower ridiculous. thirds? What is the fact that you guys were busting up laughing? I know. I'm out at next 30 hour day. I want to be the guy that just sits there in front of the computer, comes up with a clever lower third. There we go. At BMW on Twitter. Okay, that can be your job. I can be the lower third guy. I, I kind of have Is there pull. a title for that? I don't know. Lowest, I kind of do have pull in the lower third. <laughs> I have pull in the whole like, uh, 30 hour that day community. That sounded dirty. <laughs> Everything I say sounds area. <laughs> Yes, you so do, I'll switch baby. that to I have pull within the 30 hour day organization. But you can oh, also hear okay. me on KXL. Yes. Uh, News Radio 750 KXL. You can also watch The Square live at 7. I'm on every whenever they're stupid enough to have me back. Uh, 7 p.m. on weeknights. Just mm-hmm. just watch every day. It's good. Every once in a while. Especially now, Stephanie. I mean, I loved it when Stephanie was Oh, no. It's, Stephanie's it's so, back. I'm so glad she's back. I and missed her. And her baby's so cute. I know. They came over that the house. adorable. They came over to the house the other day. Um, so cute. Yeah. And uh, producer Aaron was at the Blazer game with us. Mm-hmm. Big shout out to Aaron and, and his wife. They were there. It was a good time. You're like Mr. Name Drop. You make Name Drop person. Actually, the funniest meme ever was at Name Drop. Mm-hmm. So I just like throw that in the Twitter. Yeah. Everyone's on at Name Drop. Kami right. Kamina, Dr. Normal, at Name Drop. Mm-hmm. We're out of time. We are. Say goodbye to the... Where did it go? Say goodbye to the people. We've got Where the credits go? rolling. Uh, I gotta go upstairs and sell you some Girl Scout cookies. Girl Scout cookies! Yeah. I almost forgot about I that. Think- of course you didn't. No, well, no, because I forgot to sell them all week, and I have to turn the orders in on Monday. Oh, well, I'm good for some, you know. I know. That's yeah. kind of how we bonded, was over Girl Scout cookies. Yeah, yeah. That's a, I had never even met you before. Cheers. And then the first time I came over here, she had my Girl Scout cookie order. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. It's very true. Prepared. Very true. Thin mints for the win. Lots of thin mints. You know, lots I have one box left. I'm going to go I'm gonna go home and eat them now that I know. Oh, say goodbye. Bye, Bye. everybody. It's been lovely having Till you. Till next week. He won't.